Welcome to my channel friends and today we are going to work about PowerShell and PowerShell scripts. If you are first time here just hit the subscribe button and if you like this channel just hit the like as well. And if you feel that this video is informative definitely try to share this video to your friends, family so that they will also able to understand and develop an interest in PowerShell. So today we are going to discuss about network level authentication, um, enable network level authentication um, with the PowerShell. Okay. So what happens is uh, when we uh, see that there are some servers where network level authentication is not enabled. So what is that? First, I will try to explain you or tell you what exactly the network level authentication I'm talking about. So for that, what I will do is I will try to go to a computer and I will go to the system and I will hit properties. Okay, so what we will do is we will go to the system property and if we go to remote, then you will see that there is a network level authentication. It's enabled here. Okay, so in some system, it is not enabled and we need to uh, make it enable with ma maybe manually or we will do it today with PowerShell. So the first thing is what we can do is we can check the status of this uh, authentication. Is it enabled or not? So if it is enabled, then we will leave it as it is. And if it is not, then we will uh, make it enabled. Okay. So what are the keys you need to use? So in this video, I need to tell you how you will enable network level authentication with the PowerShell. So let's jump into the PowerShell window. And I've written a, a line of a code. So let's understand the first one. Okay. So what we are going to do is we are going to fetch the information from the registry and try to see what exactly the setting is being enabled. So in this case, I have been going to run the first line. I will select this and I will run it. Okay, now you can see it is enabled because number one value, authentication type one is equal to enabled because we have already seen it. If you go back here, if you go to remote and you can see it is checked, okay? So what we can do is uh, we, we can make it uh, again disabled, okay? To make it disabled, what I'm doing is instead of get item property, I'm doing a set item property and trying to get this registry value and changing the value to zero. So if we do this, if I run this, now you can see it doesn't show up anything. So that means it is enabled. So now uh, it is disabled. The value is zero means it is disabled. So if I go back and click the remote, now I will see it should be unchecked, okay? So I need to reload it, okay, to see. So now we can see it is not showing, okay? It is uh, unchecked. So let me close it again. And this time again, I go there and I will change the value to one so that we can enable it back. So we are just going to enable it. I will select this line and I will run it again. And this time to check is it being effective or not. So I will try to get item property again. So now we can see one. So we'll check it visually as well if it is enabled as we want. So if I go here and if I click remote, now you can see it is again enabled. So hope you understand that how we are doing it. So basically what we tried to do is we have tried to reach to a registry entry, which is a get item property and want to change the user authentication tab. So when you see that uh, if you go to this registry value, then you can see it has user authentication, PS path, PS path parent, PS child name, PS driver, PS provider. So in that we want to change the value of user authentication. So that's why I put it in quotes and then we set the value as one or zero, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. So in case you want to enable it, so we will do it one. If you want to disable it, we will do it zero. So hope this video is informative. If you like it, please hit the like button. If you want to share this video, so definitely do. 